Well, hello there, folks. How are you doing? It's lovely to see you as usual. And thanks for coming over to check out this very simple recipe and delicious. I hope that I do find you very well indeed. So as lots of you will know, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations are just around the corner. I wanted to do something, you know, in line with that. So this was created a way back in 1953 for the coronation celebrations that were held all over the country and this was made for that and it's still very popular to this day. So this is everything that I used here but as usual all of these ingredients along with their measurements will be in the description box underneath the video. This makes a wonderful sandwich filling or baked potato topper or even just have it in its own. You know it's completely up to you. The longer you leave this in the fridge you know the better it's going to be because all those flavours are just going to get sucked up by the chicken. So I would reckon you know if you do this the night before that would be absolutely wonderful but you can of course eat this straight away and that's what we done on some baked potatoes for lunch. So this was the curry powder that I used here but use whatever one you like. Typically a mild one is used. So the first thing you want to do is get your stock into a pan. We're going to poach the chicken so you can either cut it up beforehand or wait until it's poached and then slice it up and that's just what I'm going to do. I'm just going to let these poach away and the chicken stock for about 15-20 minutes just until they're cooked. This will obviously depend on the size of your chicken breasts. So whilst that's poaching away you can do the base for your sauce. So in a pan melt some butter or some oil whatever you prefer. I prefer butter because I like the flavour it gives the chicken. Fry some onions, pop in some bay leaves, you know it's so easy. To this we're going to add some curry powder. I'm going to add a wee touch of turmeric just for the colour and then a wee bit of brown sugar as well. You just give that a good stir together. Make sure everything is well combined. Give that a few seconds just sizzling away and then pop in some tomato puree or tomato paste depending on where you're from. Again just give it a good stir to make sure it's well combined. Pop in some red wine. Now don't worry because this is going to, you know, the alcohol will burn off as it's cooking but you don't need to use the wine, you can leave it out. And some water as well and again give it a good stir together. Now let this simmer away and this will thicken and reduce by about half. So give it a few minutes and you'll see it start to thicken just like this and I was happy with that. So once you're happy, grab a sieve and a bowl and just push this through a sieve. That way you're going to catch the bay leaves and the big chunks. You just want the nice smooth paste that's underneath and this is going to be the base of your sauce. Nice and simple. And to this we're going to add some mayonnaise. I've got full fat mayonnaise but you can use the low fat stuff if you like. And also some creme fraiche or you can even use whipping cream for this if you prefer. And then just give that a good stir together making sure that everything is combined. Honestly guys this is so easy. You know if you do like a curry based thing or, or a coconut curry based thing you are going to love this. Like I said it does make a fantastic baked potato topper or in a baguette or sandwich. That's typically what we do here. To this you want to add about half a tablespoon of lemon juice just for a wee bit of sharpness because it's quite creamy and then your diced apricots and sultanas as well. And that's you more or less done. That is your sauce done. All we have to do now is get the chicken out. Let it cool down for a couple of minutes so that you don't burn your fingers. And you just want to chop this into bite-sized pieces. Now, obviously, that depends on the size of your mouth. <laughs> but you don't want them too big, you know, especially if it's going into a sandwich. If it's a baked potato, then obviously it doesn't matter. Some salt and pepper on the top and just, you know, stir this through your sauce. And that is you done and like I said, absolutely delicious. If you don't like curries, you know, you're not going to like this. But it's just a very mild curried chicken salad. And like I said, we think it's mega tasty, especially on a baked potato. Now pop this into the fridge until you're ready for it. It will keep for a few days in the fridge. And I think the longer you can leave it in the fridge before you need it, the better. Because like I said, all those flavours soak into the chicken and sort of, you know, penetrate all the way through. And it is wonderful. So we made some sandwiches and also some baked potatoes and this went down a storm. But like I said, you can just have this with some lettuce or something, you know, if you want something a bit lighter. So thank you very much for popping over to check out this very easy recipe. 
and a massive thank you as well to the supporters of the channel over on my Patreon page and to the channel members here on YouTube as well. And for those leaving the super thanks, thank you so much for everything. And for those who have also bought the mugs that I now have in my merch shop, which you'll find just underneath the video, between the video and the description box, you'll find my shelf there. And go and have a wee look at them as well, if you like. Now I'm going to go now and I will catch up with you in the next couple of days for my wee shopping haul. Back on Sunday for Meals of the Week and the winner of your Degusta box for this month. And if you're not following me over on Instagram yet, I'm what's for T3 over there and it would be lovely to see you. So yeah, you take care of yourselves and I'll see you off as soon back here on what's for T. Bye now.